What up beautiful people, how is everything going? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our 5 minute review playlist. In previous videos we have talked about neonatal conjunctivitis, cerebral palsy, and transient tachypnea of the newborn. Today it's time to talk about Barrett's esophagus. Etiologically, it's most probably caused by chronic long-term acid reflux from the stomach to the esophagus. Pathologically, it's a freaking metaplasia. The problem with this stupid disease is that it can increase your risk of esophageal adenocarcinoma. There are three problems that can happen to you when there is too much acid. Well, that's not a very accurate term. A more technical term is there is an imbalance between the acid and the anti-acid mechanisms. If acid is leaving your stomach and going to your esophagus, this is known as GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease or acid reflux. If the acid is destroying the stomach, this is gastric ulcer, which is part of peptic ulcer disease. If the duodenum is being destroyed by the acid, this is duodenal ulcer again, part of the peptic ulcer disease. We have talked about peptic ulcer disease in a previous video titled Eradication of H. pylori. You can find it on my channel. The problem in peptic ulcer disease is an imbalance between the acid and the antacid the hydrochloric acid and the mucus secreting epithelium. This imbalance can destroy your stomach or your duodenum. You can bleed. It can perforate the wall of the gut, leading to internal bleeding and death. Acid reflux to the esophagus can cause Barrett's esophagus, and this increases the risk of esophageal adenocarcinoma. What are the symptoms of Barrett's esophagus? They are the same symptoms as gastroesophageal reflux disease. Symptom number one, heartburn aka pyrosis. Location, epigastric, because this is the junction between the esophagus and the stomach. This pain is usually substernal. That radiates to the neck. Why does it radiate to the neck? Because the nerve fibers that supply your esophagus and the nerve fibers that supply your neck converge onto the same spinal segment. So the brain gets confused because this is a visceral pain. Uh, is the pain coming from here? Or is the pain coming from here? Said the brain. That's why you end up with an epigastric pain that radiates to the neck. The patient might describe the pain as, Doctor, there is pain here and there is pain here. And maybe there is pain in my arm. Do you remember myocardial infarction? Yeah, same freaking concept. Who supplies the heart? Uh, fibers from T1 through T4. Who supplies the part of the neck, shoulder, set? Oh, the brachial plexus, which includes C5 through T1. Say it again, T1. So T1 can supply the heart. It can also supply the left shoulder and left arm. They converge onto the same segment, T1. The brain gets confused. Is the pain coming from here or is the pain coming from here? The brain has no idea because this is a visceral pain, a poorly localized pain. That's why many patients who have myocardial infarction can only show up with pain in the left hand. It's so vague. And most doctors miss the diagnosis because they are doofuses, with some exceptions. Moreover, the pain of diffuse esophageal spasm will give you the exact picture of the anginal pain. Why? Because T1 through T4 can supply part of the esophagus. Also, T1 supplies your left arm, so it can go to your left arm. Something that your woke professor will never tell you. Anywho, this epigastric pain that radiates to the neck gets worse with eating, wearing tight clothes, and lying flat on bed at night because the lower esophageal sphincter is not as robust as the upper esophageal sphincter because of the location, because of the angle of the gastric fundus, and because it's being hugged by the diaphragm crura. Epigastric pain, regurgitation, dyspepsia, difficulty digesting, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, dysphonia, difficulty speaking, aka hoarseness of voice, belching, and cough. GERD is a common cause of cough. Risk factors of Barrett's esophagus, chronic acid reflux, truncal obesity, and hiatal hernia because they make your lower esophageal sphincter even weaker, making it easier for the acid to reflux. As you know from fifth grade, a group of cells gives you tissue, groups of tissue gives you organ, you know the rest of the story. You only have four types of tissues, epithelium, connective, muscle, or nerve. Types of cell growth include hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia, dysplasia, neoplasia. What is metaplasia? Meta means change, plasia means growth. It's an altered growth. 
It's a change of tissue from one type to another within the same category. Epithelium is changing to another epithelium, or connective is changing to another connective, but there is no such thing as epithelium changing into connective or vice versa. It doesn't exist. In Barrett's esophagus, the epithelium of the lower esophagus will change from stratified squamous epithelium into columnar epithelium with goblet cell. From epithelium to epithelium, metaplasia. Normally, your lower esophagus has stratified squamous epithelium, which is non-keratinized. Why do we have it as stratified squamous normally? Because squamous epithelium, especially when it's arranged in many layers, is better at handling friction with hard particles, such as food. And normally, what kind of epithelium do you have in your stomach? Simple columnar, one layer of tall cells, with goblet cells that secrete alkaline mucus. This is normal, but in Barrett's esophagus, since you had chronic acid reflux, the esophagus is gonna change from the squamous epithelium into columnar epithelium with goblet cell. Why? Because columnar epithelium is better at handling the acid, and don't forget that goblet cells will secrete alkaline mucus to counteract the acidity of hydrochloric acid. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. This is the story of columnar metaplasia. Why? Because we have a change of epithelium into columnar epithelium, into an epithelium that resembles your intestine, columnar. So Barrett's esophagus is a columnar metaplasia or an intestinal metaplasia. Since now my esophagus has columnar epithelium with goblet cells, glands that secrete. What cancer am I likely to get now? Adenocarcinoma. What does the word adeno mean? Gland. And carcinoma is cancer of the epithelium. A cancer of the epithelium is known as carcinoma. A cancer of the connective tissue is known as sarcoma. And as you know, carcinomas will metastasize to lymph nodes but sarcomas will metastasize to the blood. Barrett's esophagus, can I prevent it? Yeah, you can prevent it before it becomes Barrett, before it becomes metaplasia. With weight loss, diet, and behavioral modification, do not eat late at night. Do not eat heavy meals. Do not wear tight clothes. Try to raise your head while sleeping. Prop your head up on many pillows. You can try proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole before Barrett's esophagus becomes metaplasia. But when it becomes metaplasia, it's very hard for proton pump inhibitors to help. Complications of Barrett, esophageal adenocarcinoma. How can I diagnose it? Upper endoscopy, aka esophagogastroduodenoscopy, and you biopsy that epithelium. Treatment. When it becomes dysplasia or cancer, it's time to destroy that cancer. How do I destroy it? Endoscopic resection and ablation or radiofrequency ablation. Medicosis pearls for the pros. Let's talk about esophageal cancer. Cigarette smoking can lead to squamous cell carcinoma. It can lead to adeno, but it's more likely to lead to squamous. Alcohol, squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus. Barrett, adeno. GERD, adeno. Not squamous, adeno. Because remember, we have metaplasia here. Now we have glands in the esophagus for the first time. Gland, adeno. What is the most common cause of cough in a patient who has a clean chest x-ray, who does not smoke, and is not using ACE inhibitors? The answers are GERD, post-nasal drip, and asthma. Please don't forget that mitral stenosis and left atrial myxoma can also lead to cough. Pause and review. Let's review Barrett's esophagus from Picmonic. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is caused by wearing tight clothing. The esophagus is depicted by the sarcophagus. There is heartburn, there is pain, there is regurgitation and belching, there is nighttime coughing, and I feel that something is stuck in my chest. If you like this video, you will love my antibiotics course. And if you want to learn about antacids, proton pump inhibitors, H2 blockers, etc., check out my uracoid pharmacology course on my website medicosisperfectionitis.com. Sorry that the video took more than 5 minutes. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Go to Picmonic for animated medical mnemonics. Thanks for watching. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.